That's it. Click on the link. And there's the proposal. This is uh, a place where we address actionable proposals, actionable items, and announcements. This is where we talk about things that affect the whole movement, that affect the whole broad community. They are brought to the GA, we vote on them as a group, and we vote through consensus. I'm going to give examples. An example of a proposal is um, Occupy, for Occupy to have a presence at a political rally that Occupy endorses, the movement endorses a specific political rally, such as Bank Transfer Day. That is something that affects the whole, that is something that speaks for the group, that comes to the group to be endorsed, to be ratified. Um, an example of an announcement is for um, people to call your politicians, call your senators, call Jean Kwan in Oakland and tell her what you think. That is an announcement, that is a call to action, um, that may have a date, a time, and an outline that takes about two minutes. Call, this is what's happening, this is when we're gonna do it. There's nothing needs to be voted on, it's just a call to action. That will happen in the announcements. Our um, process for a proposal is based on consensus. Consensus is when the group comes together and fully supports an actionable item. This is a process. If you have a proposal, the first step, approach the appropriate working group. Facilitators? Hmm? I was just saying, show who those people working are. Working group representatives, raise your hand if you are in a working group. Our working groups include, and aren't limited to, media, direct action, facilitation, food, comfort, sanitation, strategic planning, strategic planning, finance, finance, finance. arts and culture. Arts and culture. Those working groups. Firewatch. Yeah, we got a lot. And education. Yeah, we got a lot. We've got a lot of working groups there listed online with the times that they meet. Approach the working groups. Flesh out your proposal with the working groups. Get consensus on a micro level through that working group. Refine it. Then bring it to the GA so it's voted on by the entirety of the community. That's the process. Um, we have hand signs that we will be using today. As we are discussing a proposal, first the proposal will be proposed, then it will be open to friendly amendments. Here's a suggestion of how to make it stronger, more inclusive, address more issues, address more people. This is how we make the proposal stronger, change the wording, change the demographic. Friendly amendments. After friendly amendments, it will go to questions, comments, or concerns. I take an issue with this aspect, I would like it to be addressed. We work all those out. After all that's fleshed out, we'll make a move for consensus. We will do a temperature check. If you dig the proposal and support it and think it is helping move our movement forward, you give the sparkle fingers of supreme like-mindedness. Yes, I support this. I agree with this. I will twinkle all my digits for this. If you think I have some serious moral ethical issues I do not think this is in the best interest of the movement as a whole sparkle fingers down that sounds like a block. sad fingers sad fingers <laughs> I don't know if I dig this if you have a major moral ethical issue this is sending us in a bad direction this is going to alienate people this is not in the interest of the group whatsoever this is beyond myself or me being able to make a certain meeting that is a block is a block. A block is an extremely powerful, powerful tool and should be used with very, very like deep, serious reasons behind it. So after we do a temperature check for sparkle fingers up and sparkle fingers down, if all sparkle fingers are up, that's consensus. We're doing this thing. If it's mixed, we're going to talk about some issues. And then after that, we're going to go towards blocks. If there are any blocks, yes. Uh, can you block, will you be called upon to state why you're blocking? Yes, if you have a block, you are being called upon to explain exactly why you are blocking. It will then go back into discussion. We will try to resolve the block. 
We will try to rescind the block. We will try to alleviate the concerns at hand adapting the proposal. If it keeps going and there's blocks and it's really mixed, that's going to get tabled, go back into the working group structure, and come back at a later time. If there is, yes. Uh, I think you weren't here the other day. We actually voted on the structure of how we, we do this. It's a little different. Okay. Well, we were going to bring that up today, too, because we have information from Egypt and from New York and stuff that clarifies a lot of stuff. <laughs> right? We did vote on it. Sure. And, and, how, how, and just to be clear, how we voted on it is uh, it, the whole process was as you described, but um, when we take a vote, but the answer for yes, um, that sparkle fingers up and down is opinions. Like we yes. like, we don't like. It isn't a vote. The vote is Sorry. when when you raise your yes. hand. That's a yes. And obviously, then you take the concerns, and then that's the, in the block. So really, the only difference is we Sorry. raise our hand for yes. I didn't. I didn't clarify. After the temperature check does come, the consensus vote. If all hands are raised, this is a vote. This is what counts. This is what gets tallied. Yes. You just said, Albert, this was voted on when? This was I think three days ago, four right, days ago. So during the week. Yeah, during so during I a block, whatever was decided there, because I'm excluded from any general assemblies. But that's, Saturday, that because doesn't matter. We, well, yes, it does. Okay. You're, you want to include well, people, and then you're going to disenfranchise them from a I'm voice on a vote. I'm process really quick. Right now, I'm giving an introduction. This is not a discussion. I want to know how it was decided. You said something was decided. General Who's assembly decided? meets every day. Every day, so, not just on well, Saturday. But on hours that exclude anyone who's not, That's not in the true. city center. That's not true. We meet at noon and at 5. I can't okay. either of those. Point of process. A for it. We are okay. having and a no talk one, and I get a yeah, whatever Sir? response whenever I bring it up. Sir, this is no, a very that's... important problem yeah. and a very important concern you have. I encourage the two of you to speak separately from the General it's Assembly. It's not an individual discussion. To resolve Why should I be part of a community that's going to disenfranchise me from having a vote? Because it's called respect and have respect for other people so, are here. Hey. Do you stay here every night? No. Hold on. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call vibes so right now. So you're saying if I don't stay yes, here, that I, I, then I, there's no point in coming to the GA. Yes. That's so what I'm hearing you say. No, I don't have anything to contribute to that mentality. Okay. Hold on. Vibes. You're, you're telling me to stay calm. You're the one that provokes a conflict over the camp over one fucking thing on the night before the uh, Obviously, we all have uh, opinions and we have differences and we have things that have to be discussed and worked out. I want to have a big deal to vote without having to come on Saturday. I want to be involved in this and you're saying it's too bad. There's some people who can't come on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I agree. Think, all right, we're going to keep moving forward. And this is a topic that we can discuss. We're going to keep moving forward. Oh, in the interest of the group, this is not the time for individual grievances to interrupt the process. Everyone has come out today. We are going to move forward in the process and address individual concerns at a separate space and time. They are all important. This is not the moment for that. And then we'll move forward into hand signals. When we have discussion, we have hand signals. One, we're going to be taking stack. If you have something you want to say in the discussion, you raise your hand. Uh, Ashley or Henry, who was just here, will be taking your name down. We'll be pointing to you. One, two, three. That is the order in which you speak in. We will not speak out of turn. We will not jump the stack. Uh, we have a lot of voices, and they all need to be included. If you have a clarification, um, what time does that mean? I, I couldn't hear you. That is a clarification. That will jump the stack. I have a question to clarify on what's being said that I didn't oh, understand. I know, I know you throw out a C, you will jump the stack to do a direct response to what was just said. You have a point of information. I can answer that. We meet at four. I have a succinct piece of direct information that will move this process forward. Important information. So we have clarification, important information. Point of process. That is what I just threw out. We are getting off track. We need to get back to the process. We're getting tangential. We need to get back to the process so we can move forward in a clear and efficient way. Um, sparkle fingers up, sparkle fingers down. All right, as, and when as, as vibes, can I just call that we all just breathe for 30 seconds? Just yeah. for 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Get it all in. Come all in a little closer. <laughs> And I'm, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is keep my hand up. And while my hand is up, let's remain silent. I'll only do it for 30 seconds. Just focus on your breath and relax.
I just want to let folks know that that's our friend Patrick. He's been coming, he's been supporting. He's got a lot going on in his life. He's agreed to like take a second, take a breath. People want him to stay here. He wants to stay here. So we're, we're working that out. In the interest of self-care, I'm going to call for mic check so I don't strain my voice. Mic check. Mic, mic check. check. Thank you. Okay, the next point I want to address is step up, step back. The next step point I want to address, address is step, step up, step, step back. back. Everyone's voice is important. Everyone's voice is important. Please step up and be heard. Please step up and be heard. It is our responsibility as facilitators. It is our responsibility as facilitators to keep the space safe. To keep the space safe. For you to share your voice. For you to share your voice. Please be aware. Please be aware. There are many voices in the space. There are many voices in the space. To hear. To hear. After you step up. After you step up. Please. Please. Please step back. Step back to allow other voices to allow, allow other voices to be heard. To be, to be heard. heard. Many people. Many, many people may be thinking. May be thinking the same thing you are. The same thing you are. To allow. To allow a diversity of voice. A diversity of voice purely increases our strength. Purely increases our strength. We will now move forward. We will now move forward to review. To review our meeting structure. Our meeting structure. Our meeting structure. We have now finished. We have, we have now finished our introduction. Our introduction. And we'll move into. And we'll move into working group reports. Working group reports. Following that. Following that will be our agenda. Will be our agenda that is comprised of proposals. That is that's comprised of proposals that will be voted on. That will be voted on. The agenda is open. The agenda is open to receive proposals. To receive proposals through the through, section through the section of working group reports. Of working group reports. Following the agenda. Following the agenda is our space for announcements. Is our space for announcements. Please come to one of our co-facilitators. Please come to one of our co-facilitators. To sign up. To sign up. To make an announcement. To make an announcement. Your name. Your name. Will be called. Will be called. In order. In order. Following announcements. Following announcements. Will be our closing. Will be our closing. Agenda items. Agenda items that were not resolved that were not resolved may be called may be called to meet in breakout groups to meet in breakout groups that will convene that will convene following the general assembly following the general assembly that is our structure that is our structure I would now like to call forward. I would now now like to call forward individuals from working groups. Individuals from working groups who would like to make reports. Who would like to make reports. I'm from finance. Finance um, this week has started the process of making the money for Occupy Buffalo, the funding and the fundraising more transparent, more accountable, and uh, more visible. And uh, we started our uh, we started an account with uh, the. Uh, Buffalo Cooperative Credit Union that's associated with the Lexington Food Co-op. Um, in order to, for us to have the name Occupy Buffalo on it, I and one person from Lego went there, Ashley who's right here is one of the co-facilitators today, started the account. But it's just got our names on it for now, personal names, which we don't want on there. So the next process to get the, the name Occupy Buffalo on it, we have to either start a 501c3, which is a long process and would take many months to get our name, or we could go across here and get a DBA for $35 and do it that way. So we're eventually going to do both, but we the, we decided we're going to go and get the DBA first so, can, so people when they write checks can write it right to Occupy Buffalo. Um, in addition to that, bi-weekly we'll be giving financial reports of how much money is in the account, line by line, uh, item expenses. Um, so just uh, if you're interested in finance at all, I don't want to take any more time. Um, tomorrow at Sunday at 5 p.m. in the media tent will be our next finance meeting. Uh, we're, we welcome all participation. We, uh, anybody who has experience with fundraising, 
um, anything like that, please welcome to come. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm with the Food Working Group. A uh, few reports. Uh, we have established a set of rules for the kitchen. Um, and I will read them to you and give you a brief explanation of why these are in place in case there are Can any folks hear back concerns. There? Can you hear? Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Use, the, uh, yes. use the bullhorn. If you want me to share. got a trigger on that. Oh, I'm serious. Okay. Check. <laughs> Rule number one, gloves. If anyone is serving food, they are to be wearing gloves. I think that's self-explanatory. No food or drink on the info or food table. This is to preserve our literature, to keep a clean space, and to make sure that there's no cross-contamination. Only people that work with the, in the food working group can be behind the table. This is to make sure that everything stays organized, that everything is in its place, and that uh, no one gets hurt. Uh, we will be cleaning and wiping down the tables multiple times daily, and this will result in um, the kitchen closing for certain parts of the day for short periods of time. So don't be surprised if you try to come in at some point and uh, you can't get, you can't be served immediately. Call out the litter bugs. This is a space that we all share and need. It is essential to keep everyone happy and healthy. And uh, in order to do that, we have to maintain a clean space. Everything, uh, all of the donations that we get will be labeled. If no one is in the food tent for some period of time and you see the, that a donation comes in, please bear in mind that there are markers all over and they can be dated by anyone. No one serves themselves. Food will be portioned um, one and a half scoops so everyone gets a fair share. And no one is turned away food. Whether you've seen him he here before or not, no one is turned away. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chris. Um, I'm with Firewatch. I just wanted to reiterate that this is a drug and alcohol free zone at all times. That doesn't mean uh, it goes away at night, please. Um, remember, this is a drug and alcohol-free zone. We have uh, volunteers that walk around and will uh, point you out, and we'll uh, ask you to kindly leave and come back when you're sober. But please remember, this is a drug and alcohol-free zone. Thank you. All right, so sweet. I'll do, uh, go ahead, okay. and then I'll do facilitation. Hi, I'm Linda from Strategic Planning. Uh, this week we address the following objectives. Uh, outreach to representatives, holding them accountable to actually represent us. Drafting a statement about who we are here at Occupy Buffalo so that we are not leaving it to the media to tell our story. Uh, and as soon as we have that draft, this will be presented to you for approval. Uh, we uh, are encouraging a letter writing campaign to local newspapers, and Nancy will actually do a teach-in on letter writing. Uh, we've also been uh, strategizing around the millionaire's tax and corporate personhood. The other group that I want to mention is the newly formed education work group. We are forming a school of everything. <laughs> so in the school of everything, you are encouraged to come on down, do a teach-in here. We'll be arranging them in the community. Um, we'll also uh, share documentaries, have speakers. We really want this to be something that everybody can uh, contribute to. 
Can I transfer those credits to my college? <laughs> <laughs> Once we start the college of everything, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and so you know that the School of Everything Working Group will meet after General Assemblies beginning next week, and the Strategic Planning Group meets Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. and Friday at 3.30. Interested in either, see me and I'll get your email. Thanks. I'll do a facilitation. Okay. How's it going? I'm Henry uh, with Facilitation. Uh, facilitation is the process of facilitating meetings and groups, um, general assemblies. Uh, we meet uh, kind of irregularly right now. We're trying to get a schedule. Our next meeting is tomorrow, Sunday at 1 p.m. That's here. Uh, New York uh, City and other large cities have a lot of working groups that work on facilitation, on the structure of GAs, on empowering people, on writing proposals and stuff. We don't have that many people, so our, our facilitation team is working as hard as they can to bring as many voices in and to make this as smooth of a process as possible. We're always looking for new people to come in. So please, if you are interested, see me. My contact information is on the working group list. John is walking around with that list right now. Uh, so if you have any interest in facilitation working group or any others, please get our contact information or come to the meeting tomorrow at 1 p.m. Thanks. Brian from Direct Action. Uh, this is the four week anniversary of the occupation started here. So, from all of those who were with us on the first and all of those who started camping out that night, thank you. Thank you for being here from the very beginning. All right? And for those of you who just joined today, thank you. You are as part of the occupation as we are. There we go, cool. All right, as far as direct action is concerned, this group is very much concerned with literally action that takes place. For example, the march today, bank transfer day. All right, we have a lot of marches, a lot of rallies, a lot of uh, things coming up of that sort. I want to just make an announcement saying that the standard operating <laughs> procedures of direct action have been worked on. Any proposal for any action is going to require the who, what, when, where, and hows. Any proposal coming in. This is going to streamline the process because when you say, I think we should go uh, rally at Bank of America, you have to know why, you have to know where, you have to know what time, all that stuff. This is going to streamline the process. It's going to be great. So please join us if you're interested in the action. And by the way, congratulations for the action today. Bank Transfer Day. Yeah. 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 Direct action meets, I don't know. <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 p.m. There we go. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> Arts and culture? <laughs> Jazz will follow you. Right. You can use a bullhorn if you want. Oh, no, it's okay. Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm from Arts and Culture. And uh, Occupy Buffalo is having a poetry reading at the vault on Maine on November 12th from 2 to 5. If you're interested in doing that, please see me or come to our meeting on Tuesday, Thursday, or Sunday at 9 p.m. Thank you. I'm Saul. I'm from Media. I just have a couple quick announcements and uh, report backs. Um, so working groups. I need working groups to come to the media tent and give us a list of email addresses. If you would like a listserv that you can communicate with each other. All right, let's try this again. So, uh, I'm Saul, I'm with Media. Um, we have set up some listservs for some of the working groups um, here in order to try and ease communication uh, between people that might not be able to be here all the time. Um, if you would like, if you have a working group and you would like to have a listserv set up, come see Media and with a list of email addresses and we'll make sure that you have one. Um, scribes. Um, we are now trying to be consistent every day getting the GA meeting minutes online so that people that can't be here can be abreast of what happens when they're not here. Um, so, it, you know, Chelsea usually takes Scribe. Um, she's going to help media with trying to get them on the site. But if, some, if she's not here and somebody else takes Scribe, please make sure that those notes get to the media tent at some point. 
Um, also, please keep us informed on events. Um, if you have an event or, or something coming up that you think is um, pertinent to the movement or you know something that, that you would like to see people at, please email um, media occupybuffalo at gmail.com so that we can put it on the site um, and get it on the calendar. One quick thing that I wanted to mention is that press releases um, that purport to, to be the voice of the, the group as a whole, um, if you can please bring that to the media working group, um, I, I think it would make a lot more people comfortable um, with things that are being said that purport to be part of what we're doing here. Um, I think that's very important, so please take note of that. Um, also, working groups are on the calendar in the media tent, um, as well as, a, as the events page at OccupyBuffalo.org. That's it. Thank you. Any other media? Hello, everybody. Hello. My name, hi. Hello. My name's Chris. I'm with the Zuccotti Park Working Group. We're raising money to send organizers to New York City because a lot of our organizers don't have money to send themselves and uh, we'd like to work as a community to help everyone get there and experience it and feel it and live it so that they can come back and share the training, share the skills, share the knowledge that Zuccotti Park has to offer. So after I'm done real quick, I'm going to pass this around. If you have a quarter or a penny, please slide it in there. We'd be very grateful if you did that. Uh, we meet after this. Um, we'll probably meet outside because it's so beautiful and we're going to be meeting inside for a long time. So I'm thinking back here on this bench, Zuccotti Working Group after General Assembly. And uh, that's it. Yeah. God bless. Wait. Is there, Chris, is there a group going out already? Oh, uh, yeah, as an announcer, we had one group already scheduled to go out, and the transmission went out on the car. Uh, if you have an automobile that you'd be willing to volunteer or carpool, uh, please come to the group. We have a list already going. Uh, we're really lo looking to pool resources and make this as economic and as intelligent as we can so that everyone saves money. So anything you can offer, please come and see us. We'll be just meeting right back here. Are there any other working group report backs? Okay. We will now move forward to our agenda. Our first agenda item is hosted by Henry on the topic of consensus. Can folks hear me without the bullhorn? Yeah. All right. I like to shout. So. <laughs> so the whole process of consensus is getting as many people to agree on a proposal or item to move forward as possible. It's not always possible to get 100%. That's kind of the goal. The way it generally works in most cities and generally works here is a proposal, a very specific, actionable item is brought forth. Everybody... Um, has a chance to ask questions and respond to that, to make friendly amendments. We take a vote, a general vote, to see how people are feeling. If people feel it's really great, we'll just take a straight vote and see if it can reach consensus. We have give people the opportunity to make friendly amendments and to ask uh, questions and to share their concerns about what's happening. If this process happens several times and the proposal has to be reworked, we're going to ask that it be tabled, reworked outside of the General Assembly, and brought back to the General Assembly. If it can't be voted on, or if we can't reach consensus at that point, and we rework the proposal, take amendments, address concerns, what happens in other cities is as a last resort, they go to a percentage vote. In New York and um, Oakland and several other cities, they use a 90% vote. They, they want to address all the blocks and all the concerns as much as possible. And if the proposal has been reworked several times and there's still not consensus, 
As a last resort, they go to a 90% vote, and they count the yes votes, and they count the no votes. We've been talking about this for a week or so, and it's been thrown out there that maybe Buffalo could use 95%. That would be extremely tough on a very mixed issue to get 95% of people saying yes versus 5% saying no. Other cities use 90%. So I want to ask everybody here, how many people here as a straw poll are cool with 95%? Okay, we got about half. I see a thumbs down. How many people here would be okay as a last resort with 90%? a lot of support for that one too. So we're kind of mixed. I think I saw more hands. I didn't count, but I believe I saw more hands for the 90%. So I, I guess at this point, maybe we can uh, take it to a vote. Um, are there any concerns right now about 90%? Uh, didn't the GA already approve 95% yeah. earlier last week? So we, we, the, the question was, did we approve 95%? And we did. My concern is, why do we keep voting on this when there's no one's really asking to change it? Like, there's no reason to go from 95 to 90 or to go down farther. Like, I think we have it at 95. It's been working really well. And so my concern is this is kind of, we don't need to do this at this point. Okay. Uh, so the concern was we really don't need to go here right now. I can wrap it up. My concern was that you know, things have been voted on in the week, and some people are concerned about the different assemblies and decisions that are made. And we have been debating within the facilitation group <clears throat> exactly what a block represents and what exactly yes and no votes are. So my purpose in bringing this item up was to let everybody be clear on what the consensus process is and at what point we're going to have yes votes and no votes. I was wondering if there's anything like a quorum. So you, if the concern is that, you know, you have smaller groups during the week making decisions, that's fine by me. And if there's a problem with that group, like there's a debate and they can't come to resolution, and then they have a 95% debate uh, resolution, that would be okay if there's a significant number of people. So I, I would think that uh, to make this sort of fair and, and sensible, it, it, there should be some notion of a quorum. Okay. Did everyone hear that? Res hear that? So the concern was uh, the idea of a quorum, some kind of like a uh, significant number of people in order to consider it a legitimate decision by the whole of Occupy Buffalo. Is there an amount of people that we want to see to make decisions for the entire group? I'd like to throw out there that, that you need 20 people for one person to say no and equal 95%. So for people that didn't hear that, uh, Mike just pointed out the math, which is that for there to be 95%, that would be one person voting no out of 20 people. So I think that provides a really good minimum right there. Uh, do you want a question? Um, I have a concern. <laughs> Uh, this is a movement that is going on every single day, and every single day important decisions need to be made. Do you want a mic check? Uh, sure. This movement continues. This, this movement, movement continues. continues every day. Every, every, every day, day. And every single day. And every, every single day. Important decisions. Important decisions, decisions must be made. Must, must be, be made. made. If we rely on a certain number of people. If we rely on a certain number of people having to be here to make decisions. Having to be here to make decisions. Then we will end up wasting a lot of valuable time. And we will end up wasting a lot of valuable time. I would like to respond to what you just said to clarify what is um, what decisions need to be made by a general assembly and what decisions can be made by a working group. A general assembly makes decisions that have come through working groups that have gained momentum and consensus that affect the greater whole and speak for Occupy Buffalo and rally the energy and support of Occupy Buffalo. Working groups have the power to enact, well, do you want to keep that back? Well, I think there, there's a distinction being made here about those things that can be decided upon 
which affect only a working group or only the people in the camp, as opposed to those decisions which affect the entirety of Occupy Buffalo. So what, what I'm thinking about doing now is, is taking this back to facilitation, possibly strategic planning, other working groups, <coughs> and, and hammering out a very specific proposal. Uh, if anybody would like to be part of that process, please come see me after the General Assembly. Uh, I just want to take any last questions as we're at time for this item. So I saw a question here. Okay. There's one. One, two, three. Uh, would it be possible to uh, take anything that directly affects only the people here outside of the General Assemblies? I think that the um, comment earlier about how you, you aren't here, you don't sleep here every night, should never, ever happen. Um, on top of that, I think that if we removed the um, the decisions that are only going to affect the people that sleep here at night to somewhere else, I think that that would take out some of that feeling. Okay, we had um, two other comments, and then I just want to like finish up this point. We're at time. Just, uh, I don't like seeing where somebody starts saying something and somebody shouts them out and says, we already took care of that. So an accounting procedure somewhere like there's a list of what we've already covered somewhere. As a point of information, we have minutes taken for every meeting. They're all in writing. We have most of them transcribed. We're having difficulty with the link on the site. There's a link that says GA Minutes. When you click on it, nothing happens. That is a problem of transparency, and I believe our media and web teams are working on it, and that should be a priority right now. Uh, as a final comment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think that, uh, you know, like it was pointed out, that this business about. You know, if Mike check. Mike check. Right. 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 One person can, can veto a really great idea. One, One person can veto a really great, great idea. idea. So, wouldn't it make sense to have, like, major decisions made at bigger assemblies, like on Saturdays, like this, and, and you know, routine decisions made? Right. So I think that speaks to what's happening is, is that point between what the major decisions are that should be made on Saturdays or at least be made available to the wider public as opposed to those things that can be taken care of in smaller working groups. So I'm going to uh, work on this in facilitation and with any other working groups that want to continue working on this process to determine and try and make the decision making process as fair as possible to as many people as possible. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Chris to speak on Police Appreciation Day and marches. Hello everybody again. Uh, in direct action and in uh, GA this week, uh, we decided to, on November 14th, uh, show the Buffalo Police Department that we are very grateful for the amount of uh, support and peace that we've enjoyed over the Lord, over the last four weeks. So what we plan to do is at 10 o'clock and at, Bob, 3 o'clock? Was it 2 or 3 o'clock? Hold on. The, the time for the march. 10, 10 and 3? Is that what we decided? 10 and 3? 10 and 3. So at 10 a.m. and at 3 p.m. on Monday, November 14th, there's two police departments. There's this one, the holding center, and there's also the one at the end of, of Main Street, um, right where it goes under the rail, at the vault, at the, if you know where I'm talking Upper. about. Upper. B District. Upper. B District, right. So we're going to go to these two uh, at 10 a.m. over here and at 3, uh, 3 p.m. over here. And uh, we're just, you know, the message of the vibe that I was hoping to go for was thank you for not shooting beanbags at us and thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being upstanding when you really look at a lot of the police departments around the country. Uh, the Buffalo ideas. Police Department has really risen above a lot of what other cities are falling victim to. So uh, we really hope to get your support with that. Anything you can do to help get police unions or unions involved, uh, fire department, whatever, please please pull on every string. We, we really look to have this be a very positive day for the community. Okay, we have a clarification and a point of information. Or two points of information. Go ahead. Uh, Lieutenant Robert Meegan is president of the PBA. He's retiring. 
As he was interviewed about his retirement, he specifically said good things about Occupy Buffalo. And he specifically mentioned uh, that the millionaires who control the hard uh, control board that oversees Buffalo mm. has been a problem. So, so he's on our side and he is retiring and a good shout out to him, okay? Uh, there was an article published in a UB student paper recently that suggested because we have not at Occupy Buffalo had significant clashes with police that somehow that makes our movement lack momentum or seriousness when I think it is totally something to be celebrated. Yeah. This relationship that we have with the police is important and I, I think it's great that you're showing that. That's all for it. Yeah. If I, may I say one more thing? Um, we had one okay. more? We have two points of information, okay. but you've got to... Yeah, I just want to say, it's a very strategic move. Um, it's, pre it's, it's being preemptively positive, uh, so that if, if ever a, an incursion is made into the camp, at that point, it looks so bad that it, we've been grateful, we've been positive, we've been nonviolent, arrest-free. What more could any movement do to, <laughs> to make itself legitimate? All right, I'm going to get to these two points of information. But as this is a discussion item and not a proposal, I would like to reiterate um, that if you want to be more involved and if you want to share on strategy or uh, participation, you can meet... Direct action. With the direct action working group, please bring your ideas and opinions to that group. We're now going to finish out with two points of information, Albert. So point of information, um, the most important building to hit is not the, the little station up here on Main Street, but the headquarters. Headquarters is right across from uh, Verizon. It's the Buffalo Police Department headquarters at four stories high. It's a very, very large building. All the brass and all the captains are in that building. That's the most visible and most important target. And I think Direct Action should know that, not pick a little precinct station as the main target for the Buffalo Police Department. Has it been harder? Point of information. Point of information. Point of information. The police and municipal employees. The police and municipal employees. Like police and firefighters. Like police and firefighters. Are having their 401ks. Are having their 401ks. Gambled. Gambled. In that little slot machine. In that little slot machine. Called the New York Stock Exchange. Called the New York Stock Exchange. They are with us. They are with us. I think that it's really important. I think it's great that the police have been behind us here at Occupy Buffalo so far. But I think that if that's the case and the police are willing to work with us, we need to push the envelope a little bit. Because police accountability in this city for doing things that are just and are support the community is not quite as high as their support for us here at Occupy Buffalo. Police corruption still exists. And I think we should be working with the police to come up with a better way to have police police our communities. And I think we should be sitting down here and as we go there and say thank you, say thank you, now come and let's talk about this and reconcile some of these issues. This seems like an extremely important topic that people are passionate about. I encourage you to meet with the Direct Action Working Group and support them. I also encourage you to meet following the GA if you're interested in coordinating a breakout group. Um, and, and moving forward in that fashion. Any final wrap-up? Direct Action, 7 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, this coming week, and, and just after that we'll be meeting. So please come and help us really make this what it could be, okay? Awesome. Thank you. All right, we'll now be moving forward. Patrick, with support from the city. Uh, he's coming right now. You gotta calm down a bit. Okay. Are we do you wanna rearrange it? Good? Okay. My name is Patrick Connor, spelled with an E. I don't use a pseudonym, I don't wear a mask. I say what I mean, I try to say what I mean, and I try to mean what I say. I apologize to everybody for my outburst a few minutes ago. I think it would be hypocritical of me not to get up here in front of you and bring what I had brought to this group if I'm going to throw a fit about not being able to participate in the process. So, 
I guess let's take one at a time. I, I want to say I think it's really cool that the people who have negotiated with the city and got an agreement from the council to allow this camp to continue in this park unmolested by the public officials, I think is really cool and I congratulate the people who, who put in the energy to accomplish that. And I, 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 I implore you and challenge you to take the next step in that direction. And that is to say, if you're gonna let a whole bunch of people stay in the park, then meet us halfway in terms of sanitation and health. And we need the porta potties, maybe two more and regular servicing. And more important than anything, forget even about the porta potties. One, one issue, you're gonna ask them for one thing, we need a propane tank. Anybody see in the south, they boil a, a deep fry a turkey for Thanksgiving. Get one of them big giant pots that sits on one of those, those gas things. Have it set up with a propane burner. Get the BFFD come down here to make sure it's legit and it's safe. We can have hot water. With hot water, you can use soap and you can wash dishes and you can be sanitary. That I, I've worked in food service for a long time and that place would be, I would as a food inspector, I would walk in and take a, one sniff of the air and one glance and I would shut that place down. And I'm not saying that as a critic, I'm saying that out of concern. I'm surprised no one's gotten sick. Hot water, man, tell them we need fucking hot water. And there's no food prepared in that tent, am I right? But, no but, but if we were able to have hot water, we could clean things and that's a step towards sanitation. It's <laughs> my only point. Let them. Tell them, let us have one propane tank, one burner with one big pot so we have hot water, so we have hot soap and water. Do you have a point of information? We do have a very small system for washing dishes with hot water when we need to. We also have a dish exchange with other uh, people who cannot be here all the time, but that offer their time at home for that. So is that being a concern that's something that for the time being is being taken care of? Point of information on the fire department and propanes. Um, uh, we've had the fire marshal here three times. Um, we're, in, we're in negotiations right now trying to establish um, a winter protocol for heating the tents. Um, they're not, no flames are allowed in these tents. They're not going to budge on that, period. So any of our heaters are going to have to be outside and flameless and blown in, um, and we're working on that. Just to let you know, we are in contact with the fire marshal for the city of Buffalo. This one was kind of two different items that fell under the same category. So okay, ready to move forward. Um, okay. okay. So all right, we're going to now go move into self-sufficiency <laughs> with Patrick and Cameron. Was there more you wanted to add? All right, that was a proposal. That last one, does that go through discussion or voting? Or well, was come, it come up well, and what? Well, some of those items are, are in discussion right now right, so between. So uh, just leave it as a working issue then? Okay. Yeah, That's I think great. we'll put you in contact with the folks who are working on that issue. Right. Yeah, you could talk to me about the fire stuff. All right. And then there was, two, there was two separate proposals that were very, very much related to the same topic. So I put them under one category of self sufficiency. Is Cameron here? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. So your topic and Patrick's topic, I don't know if you want to speak first, Cameron. Oh, I just felt... Okay. Uh, somebody want to take Casey? <laughs> All right, so as many of us are aware... As many of us are aware, there are certain people who are not part of our movement who are here for free food and clothes. I would like to propose that Comfort and Food put together a daily quote to recite or question to answer before anyone receives any of the goods that we have. I feel that this will discourage people who have no interest in what we are doing and encourage knowledge and discussion among those of us that are here to change the world. Do you have a proposal on what that phrasing is? Yeah. Um, well, I heard a proposal on that. Yeah. Okay. Just that whoever, so basically the person who is on food at that moment handing out food, or the person who is on comfort at that moment handing out uh, blankets and things of that nature, just puts together a little, you know, the First Amendment, or how do you feel about women's suffrages, or, you know, just little, not anything that you have to be difficult or something like that, just something to get people involved that way that if you have no interest in being here you can go two blocks and get a uh, blanket somewhere else um okay so i would like to move forward to friendly amendments before we comment as well as you do any friendly amendments to improve or strengthen the nature of this proposal yes can i just add something yep. do you want a bullhorn or a mic check yes okay 
Is this a friendly amendment? The, in, in, in concert. In concert with what has been discussed about participation <laughs> and about establishing some kind of uh, test before you uh, pass out food, etc. The reason the civil rights movement succeeded was because it drew people of all nationalities, ages, uh, religions, um, because they realized that they had more in common than they had differences. When you talk about asking people to pass a test to get food, it reminds me of the test that people had to take before they could vote. No way, no how. Okay, hold on. Um, I wasn't saying, I wasn't proposing a test. I was proposing having a written up, have the First Amendment written down and all you have to do is read it. Or having a question, not a, not a question with an answer, a question with an opinion. Just getting people involved. Okay, okay? so I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I just wanna say as a point of information, food announced that their policy is that they are not going to turn anyone away for food. They just made that announcement like 20 minutes ago. So, I think uh, what I am hearing to clarify is that there is um, a call for engagement. And when people come to the occupation, that there is outreach for engagement. I think um, we have already had some motions. We have uh, Linda as a welcome person. And I think food and comfort are two very frequent places where people go first. It's a point of entry into the occupation. And what I'm hearing is a call to engage, um, whether we want to discuss if that's like a pass-fail process or just an initiative to encourage discourse and dialogue is up to the General Assembly here. So do we want to, yeah. We all agree to like the first week to engage everybody in conversation as soon as they come in, no matter what, to welcome people and engage in conversations and ask them questions. So we don't need to have a written question to ask if they get food or comfort or not. Uh, I just want to point out that on the agenda, this is written as self-sufficiency because what I was hearing with the two proposals, they were related. I think the second proposal in this category can shed a lot of light on what's happening as far as people using supplies. Uh, if Patrick would put his proposal forth. I'm going to try to keep it at three minutes. Honestly, I don't care what you do. Every one of us is individuals. You'd make a choice, take responsibility for it. So I'm not going to tell you what to do, and I'm not going to even offer this as a proposal, except maybe to suggest that the community as a whole put this out as really if you're going to come down here, be able to take care of your own personal stuff. Bring a cup, a spoon, and a bowl. I lived homeless in the woods, and I could wash my own fucking dish. I mean, come on. And you're going to put it, uh, the conversation on Facebook being about come wash our dishes, bring us clean underwear. You're losing traction in the community if you give the impression that you can't take care of your own individual, personal, basic needs. How are you going to contribute anything at all to the bigger picture? So what I suggest, when I was younger, Big Mountain was the issue out in, uh, out, out in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Four Corners area. I think it was Peabody. They wanted to mine the coal underneath the Hopi land. And so people, well-meaning white liberal progressives, where they go out there to be in solidarity with the Hopis, and they would show up with fucking nothing. Do you and have these a people, proposal? Do you have a proposal that you want to These people living, I'm giving myself three minutes. These people. Um, but, sir, sir, we have a time. This item had a six minute time limit. We're already close to being capped for that. I'm specific. making my point, and you're wasting the time by interrupting me about it. If you let me finish, well, I started off by saying I have three minutes. I gave um, myself three minutes, not part and of I process. haven't even been talking for a minute, and so, you interrupt me. Can, can you finish the point about if the self-sufficiency? If you get out and quit interrupting me, yes. All right, let's. Calm down. We're no, all, part we're of all it was just... getting back down. I feel my space being invaded here. You're up in my space. Sorry. People so would you... show up with these impoverished Indians with nothing, 
and we were told that we wanted to go out there, don't show up expecting a place to sleep, don't show up expecting some poor person, some poor sheep herder to feed your food, to bring you food, bring what you need. The, what, the contributions coming here should be things to the community. Food is part of a community. I got no problem with bringing food down here, but your own dishes, your own cups, you live in Buffalo and you don't have warm food. What I'm suggesting is that we emphasize self-sufficiency so that what is contributed is not to satisfy individual needs, it's to satisfy community needs. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think what I'm hearing is a call to action, a call to promote self-sufficiency, a call to engage each other as a community and make sure that we are pulling people into the occupation, listening, sharing, educating, more while distributing resources and making sure our goods are being well utilized. Um, but I, this is not a, a, this is not, we're at time. Um, this is not a proposal that will be going to a vote. Why not? Can, what, what is, can I hear the proposal then? Can I hear the specific wording of the proposal for the vote that needs to be ratified? I propose that comfort and food put together a daily quote to recite or question, etc., something that engages people before they receive any of the goods that they that we have. Not not to say that any no one not to say that people are turned away. It's just that even while you're giving them the food, hey, you know, have something set forth that way you have something an idea of how to engage them. So, so the proposal is every the proposal is that comfort um, initiates a question and what and food. and food present forth a question for engagement of people coming to the table or or a quote to that we have written out or something of that so just something of that nature or a quote written out. Can I get a temperature check? I'd like to take the time to have a temperature check. Okay, so I'm seeing Mason seeing a lot of fingers down. Um, I'm also seeing we are um, at time for this. I'm going to uh, table this proposal. I would like to uh, see it go back to comfort and food in the working groups. It can be re-clarified, uh, revamped, and come back to the table at a later General Assembly to get put forth to a vote. Can I do the second proposal? Yes. To clarify, what Patrick was saying is that we should be more self-sufficient. We should be bringing our own cups, bowls, blankets, that yes, we should take donations, but that we should try and clean up after ourselves as much as possible. So I'd like to take a temperature check to say that if people are going to come down here, that we encourage them to bring their own dish, their own spoons, uh, their own resources as much as possible. I got a lot of support on that one. There's a lot of... go along with that one. Cool. So that is not an official proposal at this time, but the general vibe is that we will encourage people to bring their own uh, supplies when they come to camp here, and we'll uh, possibly bring this back at a later General Assembly to have an official policy about that. But from this point, it seems that everybody is okay with encouraging that. Okay, we will now move forward into a list of demands hosted by Mike Carter. Come on, a bullhorn and mic check. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think so. If everyone can hear me, I'll just talk. <laughs> All right, everyone can hear me. Um, so I, th this is probably not going to get sorted out in the next six minutes. But I wanted to introduce the idea of us all here starting and working on a list of demands. Um, Occupy Wall Street with ten to forty thousand people has come up with, and I believe we're not sure about it ratified a list of demands that are these 21 items here. Um, I'm not sure whether or not I should read them. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so, maybe presenting a discussion or working group on it? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I guess if, I, I'm gonna use the six minutes the best I can, but I'm okay. sure that we will not ratify this, this final list here in this group even though I would throw out as a point of process that we've got a lot of time and it's sunny. Um, <laughs> let's, let's give an overview and then maybe we can create a working group around it. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, could, I, could I throw up my own temperature check on staying around for an hour, all of us, and doing we this? We can do that as a breakout group. Which would be used as a breakout group following the General Assembly. 
Okay, I, I mean, eventually we're all gonna have to take 25 minutes with this list and, and thumbs up and thumbs down everything. Um, but, but I think that's a good idea that we talk about it with a smaller group first. Can you give a short overview of just what's on the list? Like maybe like How about I just read all of the headings? There's okay. 21 of them. Is this right now? Uh, and some points. Okay, and we have two like points that. of information. Point of information, this is exactly what the strategy committee is working on. We encourage you to come out Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. or Friday, 3.30 p.m. Uh, but right go ahead. Tuesday and Friday. Okay. Uh, is working on our own rather than strictly a New York City one. Some are pertaining strictly to New York. So uh, we are working on a Buffalo, okay, occupied Buffalo version. Okay, there, there is already. Yeah. Clarification? Is this posted is online or yes. like on the literature table or anything? Yeah. Okay. So these 21 points are able to be found online on the literature table. This is already um, an agenda item being worked on by the Strategic Planning Committee. Um, Shelly, do you want to plug that and just channel into the Strategic Planning? Is that sure, right? sure. Um, maybe if everyone didn't hear the points that were brought up over here, the Strategic Planning Committee here at Occupy Buffalo is working on this um, 6.30 on Tuesdays and Fridays, a list of demands that will represent Occupy Buffalo. 6.30 Tuesday, 3.30 on Friday. Excuse me. Everyone got their schedulers? 6.30 on Tuesday, 3.30 on Friday, and of course that's on the calendar in the tent, right? Yes. Okay, um, so I'll be there and we can talk about it then. Is there a time today you want to? Can All right, well, I mean, are we done? Following, well, we're going to do announcements and everything, so following the end of the GA meeting there. Uh, okay, so, well, I'm not strategic planning. Can mm -hmm. strategic planning meet today after the GA? Well, let's, let's do the next strategic planning committee meeting will be the formal space for, yeah. So the next, the next, if people want to talk about it afterwards, you're welcome to. It'll go to the strategic planning committee at the next strategic planning committee meeting, which was Friday. Tuesday at 6.30, Tuesday at 6.30. Now, in the last strategic planning meeting, we agreed that we could focus on sort of sub-working groups for the different projects we're working on. So, see anyone in strategic planning um, about that, and the discussion can go ongoing and flow into the meetings on Tuesday and Friday. Um, awesome. You can either see somebody in strategic planning, or please come down and become a member. Help us plan. So, raise your hand if you're on the strategic planning committee. One, two, three, four, five. These individuals are available to speak with you if you would like to get more involved and have that conversation. Sweet. Good. All right, we have now, uh, yes? Just a point of information. How does someone join a committee if they're not here like right Good now? Good question. In the food tent uh, by the library area, there is a, what? No, there's a side. binder. There is a binder up. that has sign up for working groups. You will write down your personal, your contact information, circle the working group you want to join, and you will be contacted. And we also have a list of all of our working groups, the point people, and the phone numbers and contact information of those people. You can contact them directly as well. So there's a binder in uh, by the library in the kitchen, and this list right here that you can contact people directly. Point of information. I made that binder a while ago, Second General Assembly. Not all the current working groups are on there. Okay, so this is the most updated list with the most updated contact information. Please confer with this list. Where does this list live? At the front of the Welcome Center. At the front of the Welcome Center. Come up to the Welcome Center, find the group you want to join, write down the phone numbers. All right, we have now finished out the agenda for the General Assembly. We are moving into announcements. If you have an announcement, please come to the front. You will be put in order. Come and see Henry and Ashley, and you will be brought up in order. Mike has the first announcement. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> Comrades, brothers, and sisters, my name is Michael Modern. I am the youth chairman of YSD, and I'm on the endorsement committee of the Working Families Party. As of two days ago, 
My organization, the SDUSA, it's an acronym for Social Democrats USA, the party of Eugene Debs, A. Philip Randolph, Bernard Rustin, Helen Keller, and Mother Jones, has officially endorsed not only the Occupy Buffalo movement, but has officially endorsed the Occupy World movement, and has, in, has uh, motioned to endorse or uh, sponsor my being here with sub-zero temperature sleeping bags and a really nice rain jacket. Nice. My organization loves you. We, in the past, we made some mistakes. We supported new labor and we supported the Iraq war. However, what we're doing now is a big change. It's a big move towards direct action. We're a small organization, but we love you. Thank you. Oh, let me go get him. Yeah, okay. somebody's got to get him. We'll get him in another question. I'll make a brief announcement that um, we are reaching out to the community and contacting organizations and networks. We have a lot of work to do on that front, but it is happening. Just recently, uh, this week, we um, got the uh, endorsement, the support from the Network of Religious Communities. They represent all different types of spiritual traditions in the western New York area. They are supporting us, and they're talking about how to physically support us, how to have churches downtown available for warmth and for showers, uh, how to provide pastoral care and counseling for people who need it, and the stressed out people who are out here in the cold every night do need some of that. So we are uh, really grateful for that. Just recently, uh, the I don't know if it's the United States or United Federation of Worker Co-ops has also endorsed the Occupy movement. Uh, cooperatives are all about horizontal structure, maximizing participation, members being able to have a say in how their workplace or how their living space or their organization is run. Those are pretty much the same principles of the Occupy movement. Transparency, participation, direct democracy. So uh, we see existing structures within the larger uh, society really endorsing what's happening here and a more cooperative model of living is, uh, is becoming more prevalent. I just wanted to put that out there. brief announcement that tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. there will be the first Occupy Buffalo Women's Caucus. We will be meeting in the media tent 10.30 a.m. If you are a woman or a female identified individual, please come. Share your voice. We will be building a safe space to build collective power as women of the movement. 10.30 a.m. and you can uh, speak no, but there's that. Where did she go? Well, you can speak with me. Okay. Yeah. Who else? Yeah, you want to go? You know what time it starts? Uh, 9 p.m. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, go yeah. for it. Uh, hi. Um, so that same uh, article that came out in the UB paper also suggested that um, because uh, the movement lacked direction or that it uh, was just a camp out, that kind of thing. There's a show going on tonight, and I participate in this movement by doing small things like playing drums. And this movement is about participation. No matter how small and no matter how diverse what you do to participate is, it's important and it's valuable. So tonight, I'm playing drums and a lot of great people are playing music at Nietzsche's. It starts at 9 p.m. We hope to see you there. Woo! Woo! Uh, on December 1st uh, at 5 05, uh, at 6 30, or from 4 to 8 p.m. on. <laughs> at 6 30 at 505 Delaware Avenue, move to amends Buffalo organization will be having an outreach meeting again at 505 Delaware uh, they have in, they have said that they support the Occupy movement and as strategic planning is developing a strategy to end corporate personhood as was discussed in GA two weeks ago uh, I welcome all those interested in participating to attend that event and also swing by strategic planning which has been mentioned numerous times, but 
Tuesday at 6.30, Friday at 3.30. Yep. What day is that on? December. No, the second December. one. The, the second one. This, uh, the David Cobb will be at 505 Delaware uh, from 4 to 8 on, de on December 1st.